Hey, this is Captain Noob, and did somebody say Big Iron? This is the Smith & Wesson 500 pistol. I don't know why it's called a pistol, it's clearly a revolver. But anyways, this is a somewhat customizable standalone revolver weapon for you to use in Fallout 4. Yeah, it looks pretty good, so yeah, that's a tick on the uh, looks box first. Anyways, for the receivers here, this is nothing but um, actually sort of uh, painting this thing. So if you want to make it like the Rolling Stones, you can paint them black if you feel like it. But you know what, I think I prefer this look as uh, just a regular one, which um, still says black for some reason. The 50 cal black makes it black, but the 50 black receiver doesn't make it black. There may be some um, issues with the attach points here. Anyways, for the barrels, you get a basic standard one there, which actually looks pretty good. You've got a snub barrel for that, which is um, only for brave people, apparently. Maybe it's a little bit foolish to have a tiny snub barrel on a 50 cal revolver. Who knows? You can also attach uh, modern barrels, both in black and the regular color form. So if you went ahead and grabbed the black receiver, you can make it match with a 50 cal black, or the 50 cal black barrel. I mean, all the barrels are going to be the same caliber as the receiver, but yeah, you can make that black as long with, with the receiver, which should make it nice. Now, for the grips, you've got the standard, the wooden, and two modern grips. Again, I feel like this is a glitch with the attach points. I may have gotten an outdated mod there, but uh, my internet's a little bit broken at the moment, so this is what we have to deal with. So, we'll definitely chuck on one of these modern grips. They both do the same thing. And for the sights, you've either got the standard sights or the 50 caliber short scope. I feel like that's pushing it a little bit. I think the standard sights will be quite enough for it. Also, that's really trippy looking at the grip there. Interesting. And of course, a legendary effect exists for this, and at 229 damage, oh, okay, I know enough about revolvers and how they work to know that that's not going to be enough, so I'm gonna just, you know, just uh, give it a subtle upgrade and um, just find the right perk. Yeah, we'll triple the damage. Yeah, we're gonna triple the damage on this thing and actually make it hit hard. Okay, we'll take this into Gunner's Plaza, see what it can do, and maybe grab another one just for something else to look at. Okay, so here we are in Gunners Plaza, and this is our Smith & Wesson 500 revolver. Looking down the sights there in first person, the iron sights seem useful. If I point at this wall, yeah, you can see that front post there a little bit easier as the frame rate goes up, because I'm not staring into this, which um, obviously destroys my frame rate somehow. And in third person, this thing looks absolutely massive. Big iron indeed. Now... As you'd expect this thing to be a giant revolver firing 50 cal bullets, you'd expect this thing to do pretty good damage, but we'll see. 106, 106, 106, 106. Huh. And a f mag size of 5. Interesting. So, yeah, this thing, not doing a lot of damage. For some reason, none of these revolver mods that I look at ever seem to do good damage and that is probably because I am playing on very hard which is a stupid friggin difficulty and I should probably turn it off but I'm too stubborn and I like weapon and mod video consistencies so as you can tell this thing is going to be hitting like a wet fart there's nothing you can say about this weapon's performance it'll be good um, but I've all I've stitched you all up, you see, because this is not this uh, the same revolver that I was customizing at the start of the video. This is the one with the sniper effect on it, with that three times damage. So with that, we should be able to drop these guys so much easier. 448 damage on both of those guys, and we can one shot that turret, obviously, because it's only a squishy puny turret. Gonna conscript. Don't need to worry about him. He had a good beard, though. Good on him. And we'll knock out these turrets here. You might notice that this thing looks a little bit different now. It's because I disabled shadows entirely to, in a bid to save my frame rate. But it looks like that shadows aren't the problem in here. Although we're getting a little bit more consistent frame rates here, which is interesting. Okay, so there's one Phoebe looking gunner with blonde hair there interesting and she goes down in a nice and satisfying amount of hits if you're just gonna stand there with your power fist you can catch a 50 cal to your head which doesn't kill you instantly so you know what it's a little bit it's still a little bit video gamey to hold this weapon it's not going to be an overpowered thing that just one shots everything so I think a three times damage boost on this will definitely do you well and even if you aren't playing on very hard difficulty I think you could still appreciate this thing doing a whole lot more damage in fact to test a to test this out actually after I kill this commander and that bloody turret I'm gonna switch to very easy or just a normal difficulty and use this revolver and see if it's as satisfying okay normal difficulty loaded up we should be doing one to one damage 260 260, 260, 260, 
Still too many bloody shots to kill this legendary gunner. What is this? No, don't ever use this thing without making it better. Although that 500 there with a the headshot is a little bit more sort of, um, yeah, I like that a little bit better. But we don't play on normal mode, we play on big boy very hard mode. Now I'm going to get killed by damage over time thanks to Bridget's stupid gun, so we'll just go ahead and pop a stim pack there, and we can go back to shooting her with our enhanced revolver. 779 damage, 779 with the headshot, you are dead. 649 with that, very good. This is our revolver here, so if I could just bloody reload the thing, I'm pretty... Why can't I fire this thing? Okay, so don't ever try to aim down sights after reloading this thing because you have to do that again. No, it was maybe just a glitch. You just forgot how to reload for a second. Interesting. Okay, we've lost all of our health again because we got shot at too much, so that's unfortunate. We'll press on to this melee gunner in here. Bang, headshot. Didn't kill you. That's fine. We'll finish you off just like that. So, yeah, using this thing... With this three times damage multiplier on it, more or less kind of emulates what it's like on normal mode there. But still, I'd say this is a much needed buff for a giant revolver that should be doing this damage without my input of um, damage multiplying mods there. And also, I am taking a little bit more damage thanks to the legendary effect there, so I guess... I'm turning myself into more of a glass cannon with this thing, which probably isn't the best thing for Gunners Plaza, but you know what, I'll, I'll take the extra damage for extra damage on me. Sure, why not? And there you go, that was Gunners Plaza with our improved little Smith & Wesson 500 revolver there. Definitely the upgrade it needs, don't even think about using this thing unless you're playing on lesser difficulties without actually enhancing the damage through a legendary effect. Okay, we're in Super Mutant Town now, and we've got our scoped modern barreled black 50 cal Smith & Wesson thingy. So, well, yeah, we should be doing uh, about the same damage, really, with heaps less range, a little bit more damage with less range. So, our damage drop-off is going to be worse, which probably doesn't really support this thing having a scope, but whatever. We've got a sneak attack crit there. We managed to one-shot that Super Mutant Warlord, which is great. But our sneak attack critical chance ran out there as we got detected. And now we have to deal with these tanky arseholes as normal. Although we've got that um, extra three times damage on this. So it shouldn't be too painful. Also, what are you running away from? You got a super you got a super sledge, mate. So um running away is probably like the least useful thing you could do for yourself. Steep stupid noises. This gun doesn't sound that bad, does it? Actually, no, the Fallout 4 44 Magnum vanilla sound is pretty terrible, to be honest, but never mind that. Okay, that's just a brute there. We should be able to one-shot him. Indeed, we can, just with those nice headshots. You don't really get to see the animations of this thing whilst using this thing with the scope when you aim down sights, but that's fine. Um, it's a little bit less distracting, and you get... Not a lot of recoil on this, to be honest. I think, I, you know, I'd expect it to kick a little bit more up when you um, do that. Also, I fell down. Good job, me. We'll quickly run back up and we'll switch back to our one with iron tights because I feel like the scope at this point is a little bit more on the impractical side. So we just get that doggo dead. And that one's got a minigun. We don't have to worry about dodging any of those bullets because they'll do bugger all damage to me. Now, where's this last doggo? He's usually hiding around there. We've only got one more shot to do this, and we can get that shot and kill him. Nice. Okay, back we go down here, and these super mutants have already found us, so there's no point in messing around with the crouch button. We'll just switch into third person and shoot him a little bit like that. Now, using this thing in third person is actually a way you can increase the rate of fire a bit, simply because the um, hammer pulling animation doesn't really need to take place, so you can actually increase your rate of fire quite a bit. So I'll fire this thing off as fast as I can against this super mutant, and you can see that the cycling is a little bit slower when it's in uh, first person, which is useful for when you um, uh, want to do a little bit more DPS. There we go. So as you can tell there, you can actually time it properly and you can get two shots off in rapid succession. Which, by the way, we can um, kill these super mutants in about a mag. So these are guys are super mutant warlords and they're super tanky. So I'd expect them to be a little bit more resistant to bullets than your average gunner. So you know what? I'll give it a pass now with the three times damage one. Again, I would not use this thing anywhere else. Also, why can't I hit that super mutant there? Is there something in my way? 
No, okay. I think it might have just been um, third-person camera weird stuff that's happening. Also, that can always pisses me off because I've got the bloody scrap thing going, so... Whoops. Okay, a little bit of pest extermination as well as killing the rest of the doggos that spawn out of nowhere. 1,200 damage on that Radbridge. I'm... I think it's dead at this point, so that's good. There's usually another one here, but we'll just quickly catch the other doggo wherever he is. There he is. And now we are... Totally clear in Gunners Plaza there, don't even bother <laughs> howling, you're already dead. So yes, this thing, with that three times damage multiplier, I'd say it's nice and viable against Super Mutants, especially when you compare it to against any other 50 cal firing weapons in the vanilla variety. Um, they don't turn out to be that good at all, but yes, it's doing okay now. Just Again, make sure you've got a three times damage multiplier on it, otherwise I wouldn't even bother using this thing. Okay, so at this point I've realized I really haven't shown this thing off in vats, and whilst I could make it more um, efficient in vats by taking off this barrel and replacing it with a snub barrel, I really don't want to compromise on this thing's range. We want to keep our damage for as long as possible. So there's a giant withered wendigo looking ghoul over there. So we'll just go ahead and just pound him with all of the crits we can. Oh, 3,500 damage with that critical there with the sneak attack, and now we're back to a more sane uh, 1,200 there going along these crits there, so yes, that nice first sneak attack critical really started this thing off well, and we're getting a little bit more now due to, I believe, concentrated fire, but not all that much, so I think we get either one more shot, we went for a reload there during that little, huh, we got one shotted. Good. Okay, we'll try that again, except from back here this time. I feel like getting a little bit extra distance is going to be um, what's going to turn the tide of this battle here. So, okay, so we might be compromising a little bit on damage here from this further range. We've got about 1k less damage there just because we're a little bit further out. Which, um, for a 50 cal revolver, you'd kind of expect it to hold its um, power, power for a little bit. Although, firing a big bullet would make it slow down quicker, so sure, whatever. Anyways, we've got this guy mutated already with one more crit left, so that's good. We've actually done a little bit better this time. I think we got back-to-back -back sneak attack crits on him. One more shot, and now it is actually go time. So instead of um, taking that bitch slap from him like last time, we'll go ahead and aggro these bugs. And if these bugs get aggroed, maybe he'd attack those instead. Never mind, he'd just um, run up and kill me like that. So uh, we'll just go ahead and get as many hits as we can on him as possible. God damn it, blood uh, bloat fly, you go to my way. Screw you, Buzz Buzz. Okay. We don't have a crit to use on him here, but if we can get an 83% chance to hit, and if you can reload it, good thing you remembered to reload it. You're not as blonde as some other characters that I play as. Ah, uh, bugger off, bugs, because I'm a little bit weak right now, and I don't want my um, blood sucked out by a giant mosquito at this bit. I don't think I'd survive it. Feralgul Reavers, on the other hand, you've fallen so high from your Fallout 3 pedestal that you've just been eaten by sand. Hmm. Okay. I think that is about it for this revolver. I've had enough of it. It's a pretty decent weapon mod, decent models and textures and all that. Also, oh no, you're not getting away from this. You can't escape the fury of a Smith & Wesson 50 cal revolver that does terrible amounts of damage unless you mod it to do better. But yes, it's a nice weapon, but unfortunately, it's a little bit on the low damaging side. It just It's a common theme with revolvers. They're just, they're just never balanced to my liking, so um... I just kind of had to step in and make some adjustments to my legendary effects, but now, with the three times damage multiplier, this would be something I would consider using if I was a big Revolver fan, but I am not, sorry, but yeah. It's still a good weapon, decent animations, decent quality, very, very good. I don't think it made the hot files because the Rhino Revolver actually took its spot, but I actually prefer this over the Rhino Revolver, that thing was... Ugh, its damage was bad, but there you go, that was the uh, Smith & Wesson 500. Definitely a cool-looking revolver, and a big iron, so if you're a fan of that sort of thing, then I highly recommend this mod. But if you don't like revolvers like me, and would like more um, uh, weapons that aren't old and antiquated, and also double-tap, make sure he's dead, then I'd suggest you give this mod a miss and try out some other powerful hand cannons in the Deagle range, because yeah, Deagles are cool, right? Thanks for watching.